I've decided to take a break from gaming with Amnesia momentarily to do a Linux distro review. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at Salient OS. This is the latest release, 1204.3. So it's based on Ubuntu 12.04. Nice long-term support release there. Now, first off, I have to say with this distro, I really like the Plymouth boot screen. It's fantastic. Wow, don't see anything quite like that. But then I think, oh no, this is not going to work with the NVIDIA graphics drivers, is it? Like I have. So I have to get used to the blank cursor in the corner, a quick one second glimpse of Plymouth, and then I'm into the system. Wow, great. I suppose it could be corrected, but never mind. Anyway, I'm reviewing the two flavours that they provide. So we've got, on the left hand side, Razer QT version, and on the right hand side, the open box version. There's a slight difference between the two of them with the applications that they provide and the styling of them, so I thought I would review them both at the same time to let you make an informed choice if you would like to go for either one. Now they're more primarily suited for lower spec machines, and unfortunately they only provide the 32-bit version, which is a bit annoying. I like the 64-bit version. Hmm. Anyway, I do like the styling they've done in Openbox, nice transparency effects along the bottom, and they traditionally placed application launcher on the bottom left hand side. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm trying to think, how many distros actually used Openbox? And that are based on Ubuntu 12.04. Hmm. I couldn't think of many. Is there Madbox? Although I've not tried that one. And I know XBMC has it in there, but that's based on Ubuntu 12.10 and is for an entirely different purpose. Hmm. Anyway, it's different, I'll give them that. So one of the first things I'm noticing, it's a different layout between well, Chromium, that it's more complete with the bookmarks in the Razer QT version, and there's nothing much in the Openbox version. Okay, differences between the two desktops. And you'll notice there the problem when I close the application that half of it stays on the screen. But when you do something else on the desktop, that gets rid of it. So more about the differences between the two desktops. This is the Razer QT, and on here you can get the widgets. So there's not much of a selection of widgets, but as you'll see there I've put two of them on the screen. So I've got notepad and a clock. Notepad's all right, so you can just put something like buy more food. On the open box version, yes, you've got the nice transparent menu bar at the bottom, and I did show briefly the settings where you can put it in different positions and play around with it some more but there's nothing else you can do with widgets. It really is a very basic desktop. So Razer QT does enhance it, even though it is itself based on Openbox. Just get the memory usage up on the task manager. So settings and uh, what do we want? System tools are in slightly different places and all named slightly differently. Oh, it's actually dropped this time, 153. I haven't got it down as low as that yet. So 183 and 153. The file manager it uses for each system is different. So on Razer QT, it uses PCMan FM, which in the past I've had issues with SMB, although in this case, I didn't seem to. I seem to be able to copy files across perfectly fine, and play videos here, getting absolutely no trouble. So one thing I did notice though, the menus seem to get rendered behind the video, so you can't actually see them. There are just a few glitches with how applications and menus are rendered on this system. Now it seems fine once you've used them, but initially in windowed mode they're not where the mouse appears to be. Yeah, it kind of sounds a difficult explanation to talk about. Anyway, file manager over here in the open box version is Funar, which once again if I get to the network, uh, go on to NAS. TV, American Dad, Season 1. And I've got an error there. Could not initialize XV output. Now I do know how to fix that, it's just I'm not going to go and do that in this video. In fact, do I know it? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I just Googled it last time and it wasn't too difficult to fix. So let's take a look at the differences between the applications on each system. Difference there on how the application launcher is presented. So I've got icons here. I don't have any icons in the open box version. It's under accessories, it's just a few lightweight accessories. And the graphics, we've got document viewer, 
Mirage Image Viewer and Simple Scan, Internet, Chromium for the web browser, Thunderbird for email client, Qubit Torrent for the torrent client, and Pigeon for the instant messenger. Office, we've got Lightweight, Abbey Word, and Numeric. Right, sound and video, my favourite audio player, Clementine. SM player for the video player, Silicon for the DVD burner. System tools, we have Unet Bootin for creating bootable USB memory sticks. I've already looked at the memory usage, around 190 meg. And yeah, nothing much else worth looking at there. Universal access, we have the Orca screen reader. Preferences, yeah, just a few different preferences we can change. Notice there it has Adobe Flash Player pre-installed, and that's as well as the other codecs such as MP3 and MP4. For some reason, we do have Ubuntu Tweak on here. Well, I suppose it is a handy way of getting a few extra repositories onto the system, and it has Ubuntu One on here. Under the open box system, now bearing in mind both these ISOs are a fairly similar size, yeah, the the application selection is I'll say slightly different. So accessories actually they're about the same. Graphics, nothing much. It's just links to GFUM. So one's to the home folder and one's to add new media. Under audio and video, we've got XLE for music player and parole for the video player. Office, well both of them have the lightweight Abbey Word and Numeric. Network, we've got Chromium for the internet browser, Thunderbird for email and Pigeon for the instant messenger. We don't seem to have a torrent client on here. Settings has a variety of settings that can be changed. Uh, notice again we've got Adobe Flash Player, so yeah, both systems have the restricted extras pre-installed. And system tools, yeah, nothing that much. Synaptic Package Manager, both of them have a few of the different theming repositories pre-installed, but nothing much for extra applications. And here's what I thought of Salient OS 12.04.3. So there's a really nice transparency effect on the Openbox desktop. I thought that was quite well laid out and is probably one of the few open box based desktops available on Ubuntu 12.04 that's pre-set up. Got a good low memory usage and I've mentioned down there it's 170 meg for the open box version, 175 meg for the Razer QT version. So that's slightly under what Lubuntu would be. And you get a really nice Plymouth boot screen. I did like that but of course it may not work on all systems particularly if you have an Nvidia graphics card. And the downside, there were the glitches on the open box version when closing applications. Hopefully that's not just a downside of using it in VirtualBox, I didn't have time to test it on the real system. Right, there are 32-bit PAE only, so that's the physical address extension which allows you to use more than 3 gig of RAM on the system. And lastly, both desktops are very basic when you compare them to the likes of GNOME, Unity and KDE, so that's kind of Remarking there that you don't have the snap effect for applications on positioning them on the screen and you don't have the application searcher But otherwise they're perfectly usable. I'm just explaining you don't have as much as some of the weightier desktops out there It's kind of one of the downsides of low memory Anyway, overall I've given them 77% There were kind of advantages and disadvantages of them both but they kind of weighed out and I've scored them both the same at 77%. Now thanks for watching, see you all later.